This course is Electricity 2, Motor and Controls, HHT 119, Week 1. It will be covering electricity safety. The safety that all HVC technicians need to understand and adhere to to protect their livelihood. The objective of this lesson is to help the HVC and refrigeration learner to recognize environmental and hazardous situations, promote a safety workplace, develop work safety habits by avoiding safety hazards, handling extreme temperatures, handling high pressure systems, understanding how to use safety procedures with ladders, understand the importance of personal protection equipment. Some of the terms that the HVAC learner need to understand is the national safety codes, circuit breakers, conductors, electrical shock, electric motor force, fuses, grounding, GFCI, live circuit, and open circuit. In this introduction, an HVAC technician will work with extreme temperatures which can cause harm if not handled correctly. Refrigerants, which we use all the time in air conditioning and refrigeration system, can be very cold and can be well below freezing point at atmospheric pressure, such as R22 at atmospheric pressure will be a negative 41 degrees Fahrenheit. It can cause frostbite if made contact to the person's skin. Also heating systems have flames or high pressure steam which can cause burns or property damage. Therefore, it is important to be aware of these dangers at all times while working. Sharp items. In the HVAC field, the technician and installers work with equipment that may have sharp edges uh, such as furnaces, uh, sheet metal, uh, ductwork, uh, as a matter of fact even the tools can have sharp edges which can cause cuts so it's important to wear personal protection equipment such as gloves, uh, safety glasses and other type of safety devices uh, such as even the clothing, long sleeve clothing uh, can help prevent some of the hazards with sharp edges. Pressure systems are critical to understand because um, pressures and refrigeration systems can reach over hundreds of pounds of pressure. We deal with uh, CO2 tanks, uh, and, uh, nitrogen tanks which can be over 2,000 pounds of working pressure per square inch and because of these high pressures we have to be very concerned uh, of protecting the equipment and also storing these uh, pressure vessels correctly to keep from having uh, issues of uh, releasing the pressure into the atmosphere. It's very simple. It can happen if uh, a say a nitrogen tank uh, fell, broke off the valve and that nitrogen tank can be uh, depress the pressure out of it and which can increase the pressure inside the room which can uh, knock out windows or cause other type of damage. So other pressure type systems we need to be concerned with is understanding um, how to handle nitrogen tanks and CO2 tanks, oxygen tanks, refrigerant cylinders and tanks. Dealing with uh, gases such as LP gas or even gases we use for uh, torches such as acetylene. Um, of course welding equipment it uses pressures and regulators and steam systems which we work with can be either low pressure or high pressure but even low pressure systems of steam can be very dangerous and we must be aware of that. 
Dealing with electrical is, is something that we need to be concerned with all the times because many deaths come from electrical shock going through the body. We must understand that any time the human body becomes in a contact of an electrical circuit, current can flow through our body. And if the current flow through our heart, it can stop it. High voltage may not go through the heart, but can paralyze a person and keep them from breaking free, which can be very dangerous also. So some of the personal protection equipment that is needed is using like insulated work boots or shoes, uh, insulated tools, um, making sure that there's a service disconnect for the equipment you're working on and turning off the power before you work on it or replacing any type of uh, components. We need to understand that um, when we working around electricity, not all times we can turn off the power, but we have to check the live current and if that happens, we need to be uh, extra precautious to be able to uh, keep ourselves safe. Also, we work around electrical panels and we need to know where those panels are at. So if there's a hazard, we can go to it very quickly to turn off the power. We should have um, uh, areas that you think of that uh, there can be electrical hazards and why technicians need to be aware of these potential issues because if you have non-grounded tools, current can easily go through it. If there's a tool that the grounding plug was removed, it needs to be repaired or the tool needs to be um, uh, disposed of because someone else can use the tool and without knowing and it could be harm to them and the liability will always be on the person who owns the tool. So other type of things need to be um, concerned with that all equipment need to have some type of service disconnect but if the service disconnect is defective it is lost all of its character for protection for uh, the technician. Chemical hazards uh, HVAC technician always deal with some type of chemicals, either chemicals for cleaning, uh, like condenser coils, uh, evaporator coils, using chemicals to uh, remove certain type of um, minerals such as calcium or lime out of uh, water cooled condensers. These chemicals are very strong and usually are very concentrated, which can cause uh, burns on the skin and if it gets into the eye it can call blindness so there's a concern with handling any chemicals by using the right type of chemical gloves safety glasses a safety shield over your face and maybe even sometimes even using a respirator to protect you from the uh, vapors from the chemicals These are some of the areas of concern in HVAC field that a technician will see uh, in their job duties, such as uh, cleaning condensers and using uh, condenser coil cleaners, cleaning evaporators and using the coil cleaners for that, uh, cooling towers, using um, chemicals for biocides or herbicides or even uh, type of for inhibitors to keep rusting down. All of these uh, chemicals are very strong and concentrated and can be uh, toxic to human beings. So protecting yourself is very important. Also boilers have very similar type of uh, chemicals used in other type of things for protecting it from, uh, from rust, protecting it from uh, building up minerals and so forth. Um, refrigerant oils. Some of the synthetic oils um, and long-term use uh, can cause certain issues which can be a chronic disease but uh, handling uh, oils and also refrigerants is very important that you wear uh, PPEs, the, uh, the protection equipment to uh, keep yourself from uh, hazards. Fire hazards, we need to work with um, fire on a regular basis such as using torches and if you 
use any type of torch. It don't have to be a oxygen settling torch, but it can be a, a torch that has a propane tank on it. But regardless, fires can occur. And if fires occur, we have to be able to extinguish that fire as soon as possible. So using the right proper equipment and understanding the needs for the job, which includes using a fire extinguisher and knowing where it's located is mandatory. So potential fires can occur when improper procedures are not used. Therefore, learning how to operate fire producing tools such as torches and using fire extinguishers to extinguish fires and having the proper equipment available to put out the fires is imperative. So using the proper fire extinguisher, they are rated by classes and using the right fire extinguisher for the right type of flame is important. Chemical fires is one type, a paper fire is another type of fire, and electrical fires. All these are different type of fires which require a different type of fire extinguisher. Oily rags in a shop can be a hazard, so they must be disposed of in the proper type of uh, container. A container that would have a uh, lid that will automatically close when you open it. Proper operating welding equipment using uh, hoses and regulators that is in good operating condition is imperative. So, using the personal protection equipment, which we call PPEs, is used to protect your livelihood, your body, and so you'll be able to perform your job for a very long time. So, understanding how to use it and using it at all times, based on the type of job you will be doing, is critical. So even wearing the proper clothes like long sleeves or not wearing jewelry or a watch on your wrist which can be called into equipment is important because HVC and refrigeration technicians can work in extreme outdoor conditions and also even indoor conditions such as walk-in freezers. They should wear clothes for the condition. Wearing knee pads can extend the livelihood of your knees and having issues in the future. So, personal protection equipment are needed for our daily job. Here are some of the PPEs a HVAC refrigeration technician must consider for his or her job. Safety glasses, safety gloves, work gloves, ear protection, respirators, proper clothing, hard hats, a knee pad, a face shield. All these um, equipment is needed and should be stuck in your uh, truck and available on the job so no matter what type of job you'll be doing you will have protection. And one other thing that you will need is not personal protection equipment but also a, a safety uh, aid kit. So if you do have cuts and bruises that you'll be able to take care of it uh, immediately. Ladders are used on a daily basis for technicians to be able to reach in um, high places. There's many types of ladders such as step ladders and extension ladders. But not all ladders are created equal and a technician must choose a ladder to match the type of work he will be forming. Such as if ladders are rated by their weight and the, the more weight the ladder can handle the better built the ladder is and a technician since they use ladders on a daily basis should have the best ladder available for him and by uh, looking at all ladders it will have some type of uh, rating on the side of it that you can determine uh, if the ladder can be used for the job you are doing. So the ladders you can find is extension ladders which used to reach high places on roofs, step ladders 
to uh, reach uh, levels higher than you can reach to from the ground. Um, also to go along with ladders is having some type of fall protection. By OSHA regulations and rules, anything above six feet of height, you must have fall protection, which would be a harness and some type of lanyard to be able to connect to. So if you fall, it would protect yourself from hitting the ground and causing issues. Another type of ladder or uh, that can be used is scaffold. Scaffolds are used to, it's a platform that is higher than ground level to be able to reach um, and move around uh, more freely than a extension ladder or a step ladder. So summarizing safety for dealing with electrical equipment. Safety handling of equipment will aid in protection of personal injury. Wearing PPEs, personal protection equipment, will allow the technician in from bodily harm and injury. A technician must be able to have the knowledge of safety procedures, of handling pressure vessels, and how to store these vessels. There are many types of fire extinguishers, and using the correct extinguisher with the type of fire is important to put out a fire. Ladders must be in good working order without any flaws. Also, the weight class must be adhered to.